in just three short weeks, the Nebraska football team we all love will be back on the field again, kicking off against UTEP. Each of us has our own hopes and expectations for how this season will go. And collectively, Husker Nation has been chugging that big red Kool-Aid all offseason. But honestly, when will we not be pumped up for another season of Husker football? While we may view this team through scarlet and cream-colored lenses, we aren't the only ones who see the potential they possess. Others see it too, even those who aren't necessarily fans of our great program. But why is it that others around the country seem particularly excited about this Nebraska team? Well, I can think of five good reasons. So today, I'm going to share them. The first reason starts with the head man, Matt Rule. It gets mentioned all the time, but this is what he's known for as a college coach. Big year two jumps. His Temple team went from two wins in year one to six wins in year two. His Baylor team went from one win in year one to seven wins in year two. He said it himself that the five-win Nebraska team he took over last season wasn't starting from ground zero like his previous two schools. Now, you never truly know what's going to happen, and potential is there for any team in the offseason. So we'll have to see how it all truly unfolds. But even Coach Rule believes this team is farther along in its rebuild, and its four losses by three points and one overtime loss last year indicate that drastic changes aren't as necessary in order for this team to showcase significant growth. He's a builder, and it always seems as though he finds a way to make each team a little better. Of course, we are all ecstatic over having a five-star quarterback. In my last video, I talked about why he excited me and what he could mean for Nebraska's offense. But Dylan Raiola isn't the only reason we should be excited about the quarterback position. Rule has stated time and again that in order to endure a football season that goes beyond just 12 games and have the level of success that this program wants to have, they need depth. And quite frankly, he's right when was the last time Nebraska made it through a football season without needing more than one quarterback? It's going to take more than one man to get the job done, and we should all feel much better about the group of young men that are in our quarterback room this fall. Between Dylan Raiola, Heinrich Harburg, Danny Kalin, and newly added Jalen Gramstad, there's plenty of talent and potential to go around, and it should make this Nebraska team better as a result. Every player who is back for a second season is a year farther along in their physical development. Each coaching staff does things a little differently, wants their linemen different weights, speed, and sizes, etc. And with many key pieces coming back for another year under Matt Rule, they're also back for another year with head strength and conditioning coach Corey Campbell. They've been grinding in the weight room for months, trying to make improvements to their bodies to be in as good a football shape as they possibly can be. But most importantly, they're trying to make improvements to their bodies to fulfill their roles in this system. And now, being a year farther along in this strength program, the gains they made with Coach Campbell should be as important for their development as anything else they worked on this offseason. And I expect it will be reflected on the field as they try to restore the glory of Husker power. On a random side note, have you seen Coach Campbell? I bet he could win in a round of physicality, shall we say, with just about any other strength coach in the country. Just throwing that out there. We know how much turnovers cost our beloved Huskers last season. There's been a significant emphasis on improving ball security heading into 2024. An improved quarterback room ties in directly to this point. But other positions also bear the burden of establishing good ball security. The running backs and receivers do too. And those are also positions that I have great confidence have the potential to be much improved and get the job done at a much higher success rate. Nebraska has brought back Bryce Benhart, who transformed himself into a guy with legitimate NFL potential. Ben Scott is back at center with tons of collegiate experience under his belt. 
Turner Corcoran, who has been in the program since 2020, looks to assume a starting role at left tackle that should all be but solidified now that Teddy Prochaska has been sidelined due to injury. And I'd love to see a similar turnaround with Turner to what we saw from Bryce Benhart a season ago. Another offensive tackle to keep your eye on is Gunnar Gatula, a young player with a bright future. Transfer Micah Mazuka has been a power four starter twice already at Baylor in the Big 12 and at Florida in the SEC. Now potentially here at the University of Nebraska in the Big 10 Conference. And early reports from fall camp are that he is currently one of Nebraska's best offensive linemen. Add Henry Lutovsky and Justin Evans Jenkins to the fold at guard, and you have a plethora of talent up front. For the guys who have been in the program long enough, this will be their third straight year of learning under offensive line coach Donovan Riola. The continuity built from receiving the same style of coaching year over year should pay dividends for the offensive line. In fact, I no longer want to use that word potential to describe Nebraska's offensive line going into this 2024 football season like I've done for the past seven or eight years. I'm going to use the word expectations. I think it's fair to expect an improved level of play from that offensive line based on Coach Riola's third year with the group and what they have in that room. There are several guys back on this defense that ranked number 11 in the country last year. Many of them have NFL potential. Ty Robinson, Nash Hutmaker, Tommy Hill, Isaac Gifford, and Marquise Buford, just to name a few. Having NFL talent is a good measuring stick for the talent of a team, and Nebraska has it all over the field on defense. In 2023, we saw a defense that truly returned to black shirt form. They were fast, they were physical, and they tackled well. And most importantly, they made us proud. Now they look ready to take it to the next level as they push to be among the very best in the country, like we all expect of a Nebraska defense. Toughness is one of the many pillars requisite to earn a black shirt. And earning a single digit is a reflection of a player's toughness on a Matt Rule coached football team. Look at all the players who wear a single digit and count how many of those make up your black shirts. It's most of them, and that's how it should be. Throw the bones, ladies and gentlemen.